In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the first Saturday of the month of February, 2022. And these first Saturdays are in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for all the sins, all the blasphemies, all the crimes that that crucified our Lord. And the Blessed Virgin Mary, her heart is shown with a sword through it. And some depictions show all seven swords piercing her heart, the seven great sorrows of Our Lady. And most of them are during the Passion, the meeting of Our Lord and Our Lady on the way of the cross that pierced her heart, seeing her son, his face all swollen, his eyes filled with blood. He had to squeeze his squint his eyes to squeeze out the blood in order just to see. And even then it was a red film. She saw his face all swollen, his chunks of his beard having been plucked out, torn out violently. She saw his whole head bleeding and crowned and pierced through with thorns, pounded into his skull. And even one thorn, according to St. Bridget, one thorn uh, pierced through over and came out over his eyelid. And the eyes, of course, are extremely sensitive. The face is very sensitive. The beard is very sensitive. Men who, who grow beards, they, they feel uh, every little pull. And the head wounds bleed excessively. So this is the, one of the swords of sorrow that pierced Our Lady's heart. And who is it that reduced Our Lord to this? crowned with thorns, bleeding and swollen, and so disfigured. It's our sins. It's all our sins of the human race that have done this to Almighty God, who took on flesh. It is the true God who became man. He, he is nothing less than God, yet he is truly man, and that's why he could truly suffer, and suffer more intensely, because the Holy Ghost built his body perfectly, and his nerves were extremely fine-tuned. So the pain that we feel when our nerves are like a paper cut, it's very painful. But our Lord felt it more intensely because of his perfect build by the Holy Ghost and without the intervention of St. Joseph. So the other sorrow of the, of the Passion is our Lord dies on the cross. She sees our Lord hanging on the cross, nailed and dripping with blood for, four hour, for excuse me, three hours, three hours which seemed like an eternity. And mothers who see their son or their children suffer, they suffer twice. And Our Lady suffered many times. She suffered... Uh, according to Blessed Mary of Agreda, Our Lady told her that she suffered everything our Lord suffered, everything in her heart, and felt it. <clears throat> and then, of course, Christ dying and laid in her arms. And what does she receive? She receives the dead corpse of God, and all mangled, and his heart his heart is pierced open, and she could see the hole in his side and see, even see the heart, the dead heart no longer beating, but opened, and all his wounds. And the rigor mortis having set in, his arms were extended out, out and she held this, this body. Our work, our work, and I can say my work, we have done this to our Lord, mangled him, ripped him to shreds, and beat him to death for us because of our sins, venial and mortal. So this is the reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, to console her, to pull out a sword from her heart, to pull out thorns from her heart, to pull out the nails from her son, and this is what reparation is about, expiation, to repair for the grief given to God 
and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We want to make reparation. There, there have been whole religious orders founded just to make reparation to the Heart of Jesus and Mary. One of them is the Servites of the Sorrowful Heart of Mary. And their whole goal, founded by seven saints, their whole goal was reparation to the Virgin Mary for her sorrows. And, and that was their whole focus. So on these first Saturdays, they're very precious to Our Lady, very precious to God. And the promises are extraordinary. Those who make the first five Saturdays, and we all know today it's, it's more difficult, especially for our, our dear Canadians and Australians and um, those who cannot even get to Mass. But God will certainly reward them when they come in spirit to Mass, and they make a spiritual communion, and they fulfill all the requirements that Our Lady asked. The five requirements are to pray the rosary that day, to receive Holy Communion that day, if not corporeally, then spiritually, to go to confession eight days before or after, 15 minutes of meditation on the life of our Lord, the mysteries of the rosary, 15 minutes, that's easy. And then the fifth is the direct intention to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary with that intention. And it's very dear to Our Lady, and it touches her in heaven. And there's no one who thinks of her even and raises their heart to her and begs her help that, that she doesn't hear. She is a tender mother, and we all know from the lives of many saints that many souls are snatched from hell. Mil many, many souls, probably millions, snatched from hell because of her. And even they might have to spend many centuries in purgatory, but she saved them. And that's the power of our Blessed Mother. And in heaven she will be the, the treasure of the Blessed Trinity. The, the vision of God will be the ultimate happiness. But one of God's most beautiful creations is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she will shine like a special diamond of beauty and humility and splendor among all the angels and saints. Of all, of all the angels and saints, Our Lady is the greatest creation of God. He poured all his, everything of the best into his own Blessed Mother. Bishop Sheen says that, of course God, if he could make, if you could make your own mother, she'd be the most beautiful and virtuous woman. And that's for us. But when God creates his mother, to be the mother of the son who took on flesh in her womb, what must she be? And we have a little glimpse of her beauty when St. John Vianney would see the Virgin Mary, his face would shine many hours after, and many other saints. And St. Philip Neri, seeing Our Lady, would be lifted off the ground in ecstasy. St. Bernadette, when in Lourdes, when she saw Our Lady, the, the, the doctors would pro poke her to see if she's faking, and she wouldn't feel. They would put f fire under her hands as, sh as she's folded her hands, praying the rosary, looking at Our Lady. The doctors who were testing her authenticity would burn the candle under her hands, and she wouldn't feel it. And then when Our Lady left, then she felt it, and she would say, Ouch, why are you burning me? So, just to see Our Lady puts one into ecstasy. And in Latin, that means ex stare, to stand outside yourself. You're taken outside of yourself in such joy and absorption into her beauty. So, everyone who sees Our Lady, most of the saints who have seen her are incorrupt. They're incorrupt. They never rotted. And St. Bernadette is a prime example and the children of Fatima have been found incorrupt. So, what must be the beauty of Our Lady with all the angels and saints in heaven? And we're made to, we do have her, her as our mother. We have her as our mother. And when a little kid gets in trouble or hurts himself or whatever happens, when they're little, they usually turn to their mother. And even when they're bigger, they turn to their mother. 
So a mother is such a gift of God, and we have one, a mother of our soul. So let's always be close to her and console her with this first Saturday and really strive to make reparation. And the promise given for the five first Saturdays is you will die in the state of grace with all the graces necessary to save your soul. In other words, you're going to get to heaven. It's such a gift. We're, we're insane not to do the five first Saturdays. It's such a gift. But yet many traditional Catholics are negligent on something so basic. They're very negligent. They start them and they'll finish or they never do them. Especially among the young, when it's not a practice in the family, they just never do them. And then that's the same for the five, excuse me, the nine first Fridays. So let's really strive to do them and do them as much as we can. If we finish five first Saturdays, let's start another five first Saturdays, if it's available and possible. Um, to make reparation for those who don't want to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And in this way, you can help also save souls. Let's take a look briefly at St. Agatha. Her name is in the canon of the Mass, and the priest today will bow his head at her name towards the Missal during the Mass in honor of St. Agatha. Here's her story, here's her account from the early church. The cities of Palermo and Catania in Sicily dispute the honor of St. Agatha's birth, but it is agreed that she received the crown of martyrdom at Catania. She triumphed over the assaults upon her purity. So as a young girl, she consecrated her body and soul to Christ. So the governor... The governor of the city, Quintian was his name. He was a man of consular dignity. He thought he could carry out his evil designs because he wanted to marry Agatha. And of course, these pagans, marriage meant several wives, usually. He thought he could carry out his evil designs upon Agatha by means of the emperor's edict against the Christians. He therefore had her brought before him. Seeing herself in the hands of her persecutors, she prayed, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord of all, thou seest my heart, thou knowest my desires, do thou alone possess all that I am. I am thy lamb, make me worthy to, become, to overcome the devil. Quincian ordered her to be handed over to Aphrodisia, a most wicked woman who with her six daughters kept a house of ill fame. In this dreadful place, St. Agatha suffered assaults and stratagems upon her honor more terrible to her than the torture of death. But she stood firm. She stood firm. So we see St. Agatha exposed to temptations. And in this world, there's temptations everywhere. So we, we can pray to St. Agatha for victory against temptations, especially against holy purity. And she's one of these champion saints among, um, among all those virgin martyrs of Rome. And in the modern day, we have St. Maria Goretti, who, who was killed being assaulted against purity. So we want to pray to St. Agatha for victory over such temptations. In this dreadful place, she stood firm. After a month, Quintian tried to frighten her with, with threats, but she remained undaunted and declared to be a servant of Jesus Christ, was to be truly at liberty. The judge of often offended at her resolute answers commanded her to be beaten and taken to prison. The next day she underwent another examination, and she asserted that Jesus Christ was her light and salvation. Quincian then ordered her to be stretched out on the rack, a torment normally accompanied by whips 
the tearing of the side with iron hooks and with and by burning with blazing torches the governor enraged at seeing her suffer all this with cheerfulness ordered her breasts to be cruelly crushed and then cut off and in the roman breviary it says she spoke to Quincium as she was undergoing this specific torture and she said Quincy she said she said what audacity of you to cut off the very instrument of the body whereby your own mother nursed you as a baby how how could you do this and afterwards he rem he remanded her to prison enjoining neither that neither food nor medical care should be supplied to her. But God gave her comfort. She had a vision of St. Peter the Apostle, who filled her dungeon with a heavenly light and consoled her and healed her. Four days later, Quincian caused her to be rolled naked over live coals mixed with broken pottery. As she was carried back to prison, she prayed, Lord, my Creator, Thou hast always protected me from the cradle. Thou hast taken me from the love of the world and given me patience to suffer. Receive now my soul. And after saying these words, she breathed out her life. Saint Agatha in Sicily, she was credited with the power of arresting the eruptions of Mount Etna, the volcano in Sicily. So she is invoked against any outbreak of fire. So let's pray to St. Agatha. This is her feast today and her glorious martyrdom. These Roman martyrs are treasured by the church. There, there's a whole list of their names in the canon of the Mass, these victorious virgin martyrs. Let's pray to them to keep virg virginal in our soul from any, any attraction to sin, to be anchored in the holy purity and anchored with the holy impure intentions in all that we do. One of the instructions from the angel to the children of Fatima was every morning to make the morning offering, to, to offer everything we do through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And that covers the whole day and night. To do everything we, we do, all our actions, whether you eat or drink, sleep, work, play, pray, whatever we do, do it all in union with the Immaculate Heart of Mary in reparation to her. And that will pour grace in the soul, and the soul will speedily rise from from lukewarmness to fervor, fervor to perfection. And this is the promise of our Lord to those who love and honor his sacred heart. So let's turn to the Mother of God, console her on this first Saturday. O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, O Mary conceived without sin, and for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.